Hello, and welcome to part one of the five-part series on ileostomies. My name is Sophia, and I'm one of the ostomy nurses that works here at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. You have been asked to watch these videos because you will be having surgery that may involve the creation of an ileostomy. In part one, we will discuss gastrointestinal anatomy and ostomy pouching. These statistics are provided by the United Ostomy Association of America. So over 750,000 Americans have an ostomy, and just to compare, the population of Vermont is 626,000 people. So about 125,000 more people have ostomies than live in the state of Vermont. Additionally, over 130,000 people will have ostomy surgery each year. So to review some basic gastrointestinal or GI anatomy, when you swallow food, it goes down your esophagus, into your stomach, through your small intestine, through your large intestine, and then you poop it out your bottom. An ileostomy is an ostomy that's created with the last portion of your small intestine, or your ileum. Let's watch this short video to learn more. An ileostomy is a surgical opening into the ileum, the last section of the small intestine. Now this surgery brings about big changes to the body, so let's review the functions of the GI tract so we'll better understand how the surgery can affect our body. We chew our food and it goes down our esophagus and into the stomach. The chewed up food is going to move by a muscular movement, which is going to help push and propel the food through the GI tract. Now the GI tract secretes mucus to help lubricate and protect the GI tract and to help keep food sliding and moving along to aid in digestion. In the stomach, the chewed up food is held and stored and churned as it's met with digestive enzymes, then slowly released to go into the small intestine. And as it moves into the small intestine, more digestive enzymes are added in from the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas to help break the food down. The digestive enzymes will melt the food down and the muscular movement will help churn and break the food apart. The vitamins and nutrients are extracted from the chewed up food in the small intestine. So you can say that the small intestine eats for us. And it's a very caustic environment in the small intestine as well. This is where steak and cabbage and pasta are being broken down, liquefied, to be used for fuel for our bodies. Now, the food moves from the small intestine into the large intestine, also known as the colon. And I said earlier, the small intestine eats for us. Well, the job of the large intestine is to drink for us. It absorbs the liquid from the liquid that we drink and the liquid from the foods that we eat. And the more colon we have, the more opportunity for absorption of liquids our body will have. Now, the remaining chewed up food moves through the colon and exits the body through the anus. For an ileostomy, the surgeon separates the GI tract in the ileum section of the small intestine and either removes the colon or closes it off. Then the surgeon will create a diversion by making an opening into the abdominal wall. Then pull the open end of the GI tract through this new opening, fold it over, such as a cuff, and suture it down to the body. Now this is known as an end stoma and this is where the stool will exit the body. The patient will wear a pouch over it to collect the stool. Another type of stoma that we frequently see with an ileostomy is a loop stoma. For a loop stoma, the surgeon pulls a loop of the GI tract up onto the abdominal wall through a small incision. The surgeon generally uses a rod to help support the loop of bowel and prevent it from falling back into the abdominal cavity. Then the surgeon is gonna split this loop of bowel fold it open and suture it down to the body. Now some surgeons will leave it where you can see the two openings going into the body. Some surgeons will further perfect it so it kind of looks like a little tube up off of the body and some surgeons will actually put the two stomas side by side. So they kind of look like a double barrel. Most surgeons say that a loop stoma is easier to take down in the event that this is a temporary diversion. If you would like more information about ostomy surgery or ostomy management, please contact the UOAA at ostomy.org. Thank you. So just to review, the small intestine is approximately 20 to 22 feet long, and it plays a vital role in fluid and electrolyte balance. And electrolytes are things like salt, potassium, and magnesium, 
that your body needs to function. It also digests and absorbs nutrients, so it eats for you. The large intestine is five to six feet in length. It stores poop or stool, and it absorbs liquid, so it drinks for you. These functions are what people with ileostomies will not have postoperatively or after surgery. However, the small intestine will slowly start to absorb liquid for you. What is a stoma? A stoma, or ostomy, is a Greek word for opening. For your ileostomy, your surgeon will take your small intestine, bring it up through an incision in your abdomen or your belly, and turtleneck or roll it over on itself and stitch it to your belly. So what you'll see on the outside of your belly is the inside mucosa or lining of your bowel, like the inside of your mouth. So here we see two pictures of real stomas. As you can see, the stomas come in different shapes and sizes, but a healthy stoma should always be pink or red and moist like the inside of your mouth. The stoma may bleed a little bit when you clean it, but that is completely normal. You may be tender around the stoma after surgery because that's where the surgeon made the incision to pull the intestine through. As we heard earlier, there are both end ileostomies and loop ileostomies. The photo on the left is a loop ileostomy, and you can see there's a piece of plastic underneath that loop, and that's what we call the bridge or rod. Although the surgeon will stitch the stoma to your abdomen or your belly, the bridge is there to support the loop ileostomy while it heals. The bridge will stay in, in until everything around the stoma is healed, and most often it is removed before you go home. There are different types of bridges, so if you have a bridge, it may not look like the one in the photo. And the photo we see on the right is an end ileostomy. There are no nerve endings in the stoma, so you should not have any feeling there, and this is why you will need to wear a pouch. We recommend changing the ostomy pouch twice a week, three to four days apart from each other. And by change, we mean taking off the pouch, cleaning the skin around your stoma, and putting a new pouch on. Now, in between changing the pouch, you will need to empty the pouch. And you want to empty it when it's a third to a half full. Initially, right after surgery, the poop is going to be a little bit more liquid. So you'll have to empty anywhere from six to eight times a day, including emptying overnight. Eventually, you'll be able to empty the pouch four to six times a day. And it is okay to swim, shower, take a bath, anything you did before surgery, you can do after surgery, even with the pouch, once you get clearance from your surgical team. So here are two of the most common pouches that we see. So we have a two piece, which is two pieces that snap together to create the pouch. So you have the wafer and the pouch. And then we have a one piece, which everything is already together. So no snapping. Regardless of which type, they both have wafers, and this is the sticky part that sticks to your belly around the stoma. So the longer that's on there, the stickier that gets. And this is the wafer here. Right, so that's the sticky part right there. So in between changing the pouches, you will be emptying the pouches. And both of them work by Velcro closure, just slightly differently. So this one unvelcros and unrolls. And there's an opening right there. And for right after surgery, you'll empty this into a container so we can measure how much, how much output you have. But after um, a little while after surgery, you could just empty right into the toilet. So once you have this open and emptied, then you would take a baby wipe or a wet paper towel and you would just clean out the tail end of that pouch. And then you would roll that back up and Velcro. And this one, again, also Velcro, just a little bit different. You un-Velcro and unroll. And again, open and empty into a container or the toilet and then clean that tail end out and roll that back up like that. So for changing the pouch, we do need a couple different supplies. So first we need a, a new pouch. We'll need a marker, some scissors, 
And here in the hospital, we use gauze because we have it, um, but at home, you can use paper towels. So we'll need some damp gauze or paper towels and some dry gauze or paper towels. And then we also need a measuring guide. And so we need to measure the stoma after surgery to see what size it is so that we can cut out the correct size hole in the wafer to fit around the stoma. And after surgery, your stoma will be swollen, just like if you twist your ankle, things get swollen. So same thing with surgery. So we'll need to measure to see what size we need to use. And over the four to six weeks after surgery, the stoma may shrink in size. So we wanna to continue to measure to make sure we are cutting out the right size in the back of the wafer. After surgery, the ostomy team works very hard to make sure we find a pouch that works well for you. The first pouch we try may not be the one you end up using. So don't be alarmed if we try several different pouches and accessories during your hospital stay. Thank you for watching this video and please visit our other ileostomy videos.